Good morning, saints. Good morning, sinners. <laughs> Good morning to all. Uh, today, we're going to start off in a different place than we have the last few days. We're Friday. It's the end of the week. and I'm going to get to see some of you on Saturday and some of you on Sunday, and that'll be different and exciting. There's just so much darkness in the world. I, I thought today we would go to 1 John and, and hear this message. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If, we've conf if we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, over the last... Uh, three months of quarantine and uh, staying at home orders and uh, news, you know, about 110,000 people dying in these few months. Uh, it just seems like darkness surrounds us. And then add to that the, the tragic death of George Floyd and others and the whole notion of it's the police's fault or it's uh, white people's fault or it's black people's fault. And it seems like people continually come out of that pointing their finger at someone else being to blame. So it's clear to me when we read all of the messages of the scriptures that the place we start in our own story is with confession. Oh, we don't need to go find a priest in a confessional booth. But if we can't understand how much in need of a Savior we are, then we don't look for the Savior to save us. If we don't realize what a problem we are, then we can't change. When I was uh, first into the Alcoholics Anonymous movement, it became clear to me that uh, it was easy to uh, look around at the other people in the rooms of AA and say, I'm not as bad off or and my, my uh, alcoholism wasn't as bad as theirs or whatever a comparison I wanted to make. Uh, the reality is that until I owned it, God couldn't save me from it. And, and I wonder if, if, if this whole notion of uh, who is important doesn't stem way back to things maybe that we don't even aware or aren't aware that we learned in our own inner being, events and circumstances that happened that maybe we had little or no control over. Just because we didn't know what we were doing, once we become aware, it's time for us to realize what we were doing was wrong. You know, we talk frequently about it. You've heard me say this many times. Some of you have, the ones that know me better. Uh, there's three kinds of grace. Provenient grace is preventing grace. It's the grace that 
uh, Wesley talked about that it's in your life from the moment that you're conceived and and uh, and then and then one day you have this awareness of justifying grace which is is that time in, in which you begin to realize that God has been saving you all of your life and for for even just an instant your life lines up with God's will and so many Christians around the country and the and the, the world think that's that's the when you and you accomplish that day you've accomplished your goal but Friends, let me tell you, that's really only the beginning because it's that day that you realize what a sinner you are. It's that day that you realize you have not been walking in light. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we haven't sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Do you see the message here, friends? That's where we need to begin our journey that's where we need to begin our relationship with the world, with the people that we think are second class or third class citizens, with the people we don't like because of their lifestyle or their gender or whatever. Yeah, let's start with ourselves. Who we are in our deepest being. Because if we want to claim even a smidgen of sinlessness, we're making God into a liar. Now, I'm not really comfortable with that. How about you? No, I'm not comfortable making God into a liar. So then that, at times, really pushes hard for me to remember and to understand that it's my thoughts, it's my being, it's my existence that is a full manifestation of sin on this planet. But it's not just me, you see, because we all fall into that same model. Now, there's not a person that can point out to you that yours is worse than theirs or theirs is better than yours because we all need to be so consumed with our own. No, most of us haven't gone and murdered anybody but based on what I hear and what I'm around, there's most people in the human family, uh, it's not hard to point out their sin. But see, for me to point it out or for another body to point it out or even for the church to point it out, it doesn't mean near as much as when you wake up that day and you open your eyes and you realize, yeah, I'm a sinner. That's what happened to John Wesley in Aldersgate Day. He realized even though he had done all these things right, that God, that Jesus died even for him. But he didn't die for you and me so that we could go on being like we are. He died for you and me so we could change, so he could change us. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We have fellowship with one another. We have fellowship with other human beings. I've heard so many times over the last few weeks that what the world needs more of is, is love. But you see, I think we have such a skewed up, a screwed up, a skewed definition of love that I don't think most of us are capable of doing it. We believe it's some romantic or, or clingy kind of a thing. 
You know, I love my Beagle. I love the Astros or the Texans. But love is, is, is a different thing than that. It's what Jesus showed to us. It's what he showed to the, the, the lepers that day on the hill when, when he told them to go and tell the priest they were healed. It's what he showed to the demoniac in the cemetery when he drove out the demon. It's what he showed from the cross. When he said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. Which gives us hope. We have a chance for forgiveness. If we can repent, turn, turn toward or turn back to, to God, then we have an opportunity to experience light. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today, that's where I'm going to start. For the sins that I've committed already today, the sins that I committed yesterday, and the life-changing experience of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that I pray for. So that I can be forgiven for all my sins, the ones I point out, the ones I identify and from all unrighteousness. And I believe then maybe I could be a part of the, of the movement, the, rev, the revolution, if you will, that Jesus started to change the world. Let's pray. God, forgive me, a sinner. Forgive all of us who have sinned and walked away who have deliberately violated your commandments and those of us through our apathy and unwillingness to move forward have kept quiet and sinned as we were complicit in evil. Gracious God, forgive us. Cleanse us. as you take away the evil and sin and destruction within us. Replace it with the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. See you guys tomorrow.